Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben and in this video I'm going to be giving my feedback on the official Cambridge English Language Assessment YouTube video on the C2 proficiency speaking paper with Dirk and Anik. Now you may have seen this video before, this one has about 3.8 million views I think. And you may have seen that last week in my last video, I did the same for the C1 Advanced um, speaking uh, paper, uh, official Cambridge video. Um, I, as I said in my last video, I think these videos are really useful to watch for anyone who's preparing for the Cambridge exams. Um, but I do think they lack a little bit of professional feedback. Now I have to remind you, I'm not <laughs> an examiner, but I am a teacher with a lot of experience um, helping students prepare for, for these Cambridge English exams. So I think my feedback is valid and will be very useful to you. And with that in mind, anyone who's planning on taking the C2 proficiency exam, my, my complete C2 proficiency preparation course is available now. So check out the link in the description along with the, the C1 advanced preparation course. So if you're planning on taking either of those exams, then I think you'll find my preparation course very useful. So let's start watching this uh, this video. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind while watching the video, I, I recommend you you watch it from the perspective of the examiner. So you need to think about the, the criteria, the marking criteria that the examiners look at. And they basically have five criteria. So that's the grammatical resource, uh, lexical resource, so the vocabulary that the candidates use, uh, discourse management, so that's referring to um, the coherence, uh, the fluency, basically, how 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 well they speak, uh, how fluent fluently they speak, um, pronunciation, of course, and interactive communication. So those are the five criteria that the the examiners look at. So I think it's really useful when you're watching this from from a sort of the outside rather than being actually doing the task yourself it's it's good to see it from the point of view of the examiner to see what the candidates do well where they would gain marks and what areas they could perhaps improve on to to gain more marks okay so let's go ahead and start i will be stopping the video regularly to give my feedback um and i do recommend that you think about how you would answer the questions uh, before the candidates answer the questions, just to to just to to put yourself in in that position and imagine how how you would do the tasks. Okay, so let's let's start at the beginning with with part one. Good morning. My name is Sally Matson, and this is my colleague Jill Budgie. And your names are Dirk and Anik. Could I have your mark sheets, please? Thank you. First of all, we'd like to know something about you. Where are you? Okay, so this is the first part of the exam, which is called the interview. Um, we, we often call it the warm up or the icebreaker. Um, it's just some some quite simple personal questions, not too personal, that the interlocutor directs to each candidate individually. So there's no communication between the candidates. The, the candidate just responds to the interlocutor. Uh, with the C2 proficiency exam in particular, one of the advantages, which you don't get in the C C1 advance, is that you know which the uh, what the first two questions will be. You know that they will be, where are you from? And are you uh, st working or studying at the moment? So I always say you, you don't want to prepare a rehearsed answer to those questions, but it's good to have something in mind, just some just to have an idea of how you're going to answer those questions. Maybe a couple of impressive words to describe where you live or just something so that you you feel a bit more confident and, and relaxed when you start. Okay, so as I said, the first question for both students will be, where are you from? So let's see how they answer that. Where are you from, Dirk? I'm from Holland. I'm from uh, Harlem. It's uh, near to the west coast of uh, Holland. And you? And I'm from Zurich, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Are you working or studying at the I'm moment? I'm studying at the moment, but now I'm right now taking a gap year, so obviously I'm not studying, mm -hmm. studying English. But and you? Uh, I'm having a gap year. Uh, I finished my high school uh, this summer, and I'm going to uh, university next uh, summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the first two questions. As I said, you will know what those will be. Um, 
again, I, I recommend that you give, you think about how you would um, mark the students yourself, um, just to, to, to get a feeling for what the examiners are looking for. So Dirk, um, yeah, he said, I'm from Holland, and then he specified Harlem, uh, it's near to the West Coast. So he expanded a little bit on, a, on his answer. Annick said, I'm from Zurich, Switzerland, nothing more. Very simple, very to the point. Uh, I liked Dirk's answer more because he did expand. I think it's difficult to know how much you the, the how much time the interlocutor will give you to answer this question. I've I've heard from my students' experience that they often interrupt them quite early because my students prepare or have in mind quite long answers and they don't have an opportunity to to give those answers. I always think it's better to have to say more to say too much than too little, so that um, if the interlocutor does interrupt you that's fine but you you've you have something to say in case they let you speak for longer i think anik didn't take advantage of the opportunity to say just a little bit more um i mean dirk didn't say much more he just said near to the west coast but i think it's better and then anik with uh, studying uh, are you working or studying she said i'm studying at the moment and i for a moment i thought she was going to stop there but she did expand on that she said she's now taking a gap year um, obviously not studying, um, but she's studying English. So, but yeah, that's better. At least she expanded a little bit. And then Dirk also said he's having a gap year. Um, yeah, it's more common to say I'm taking a gap year than having a, a gap year. But uh, he said he's um, something about high school. So, so yeah, they both expanded. They um, elaborated a little bit. Their answers, yeah, fine. Not a bad start. Um, now there will be one more question. Um, which the, the students, the candidates will not know. They w It's impossible to prepare for because they just don't know what it will be. Let's see what it is or what they are. It will be a different question for each candidate and how they answer them. Can you tell us something about your plans for the future in terms of work? Uh, I want to become a doctor. I want to uh, improve the health of uh, y human uh, beings. Mm -hmm. And Anik, what do you think you'll be doing this time next year? Well, I'll be doing my bank internship, which takes um, 18 months. So next year, obviously, I'm going to be there and taking my exams probably pretty much. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, fine, fine answers. Yeah, again, I, they didn't give too much information, but it seemed to be sufficient for the interlocutor. The interlocutor can always ask more questions if they feel they haven't got enough content, enough content for the assessor who is sitting behind the interlocutor to mark. Um, or they can just ask why. Often they just ask why, just to, to force or to encourage the candidates to expand on their answers. So Dirk said, I'd like, I want to become a doctor to imp improve the health of human beings. Okay, it's quite, quite a, a, a grandiose answer, which is fine. Um, and Anik said uh, she's, she'll be taking a bank internship, which takes about 18 months. So, yeah, fine. They both gave their answers and expanded a little bit. And perhaps I would have liked to have seen a little bit more, um, a little bit more content. A bit, they could have been a bit more forthcoming with their answers, with a bit more elaboration. This is C2 proficiency, but but it's fine. It's again, this is kind of a warm up. It is evaluated, so it's important. I always say this is an opportunity to make a good first impression. It's fine. Everything fine so far. No big horrific mistakes, so so fine. Now, part two is a bit um, more, more complicated. It's quite um, a, a tricky task. Um, and if you've never seen this task or practiced this task before, it may be it's it's going to be very useful for you to see it today because it's there's a lot to to do in this task there are actually two tasks in one as the interlocutor will explain in a moment but this is called the collaborative task and it's uh, where students see some pictures and have to talk about the pictures but the key word there is collaborative so we'll be seeing how well the candidates can co collaborate on on the pictures okay so we're going to listen to the instructions from the interlocutor and then the the answers the first task is just a one minute task between the two the two candidates now in this part of the test you're going to do something together here are some pictures of different situations 
first I'd like you to look at pictures A and D and talk together about the sounds you might hear in these situations. You have about a minute for this, so don't worry if I interrupt you. OK, I just want to give you a chance because the, these pictures will disappear in a moment. But um, so the question, the, the task is to look at uh, pictures A and D and talk about the sounds you might hear. So the sounds uh, and they only have one minute to do that. So again, if you want to think about how you would answer this question, pause the video and spend a minute just think, either thinking about it or doing it um, yourselves. But let's listen to how Dirk and Anik did the task themselves. Okay, in picture A, you can see, I think, some kind of jungle with chimpanzees. Yes. So um, I guess there are a lot of natural sounds, like leaves moving and maybe some water, maybe there's a river yeah. nearby. And maybe the roaring of the, of the chimpanzees as well. Yeah, or gorillas, okay. I don't know, some kind yeah, of apes. Wind, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, maybe also some birds, because yes. there are going to be a lot of Definitely, birds. Definitely, yeah. And what other animals could there be? Well, just yeah. different kind of insects, maybe as well. Yeah, but I don't think you hear them a lot. Yeah, about D, depends. I think the splashing of the water, definitely of the sea. I mean, the the the, the sound of the rolling uh, plastic objects. Yeah, but I don't think you hear any people because it doesn't no. look so nice there. So I no. think it's going to be pretty yes. much. Thank you. Now look at... Okay, so yeah, what did you think? As I said, put yourself in the shoes of the examiner and think about what you would, how you would um, mark that. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it's a difficult question, isn't it? I've, I've seen this question in other tasks or the, with other pictures and it, it's difficult to think about what sounds you might hear. It's, it's not necessarily a, a question you'd expect to get on, on pictures. Um, but Anik started well. I mean, she said, I think she said, if I heard correctly, on picture A. And this is a very common mistake that students make. It's they use the wrong preposition and it's so easy to fix. It's just in picture, in picture A. As in picture A, uh, there's a jungle with some chimpanzees. Um, so you may hear leaves moving. Maybe there's a river nearby. So that's good. Very important with this part of the exam is that you have to be using uh, speculative vocabulary. You are speculating about what ha sounds you might hear. So you should be using words like maybe. I mean, both Anik and Dirk used maybe a lot, which is fine. Maybe is a perfectly good word. But uh, at C2 profici proficiency level, the examiners would be looking for a wider range of speculative vocabulary. So perhaps uh, it, it looks like, it seems like, or could be, must be, all these kind of words. Or expressions which you know rather than just repeating maybe all the time it demonstrates a, a a wider range of appropriate vocabulary but apart from that they both did demonstrate some good vocabulary on on the topic topic specific vocabulary which is very important on this in the c2 proficiency exam uh, because dirk then said maybe the roaring of the chimpanzees i think he said i don't think he really pronounced chimpanzees um Anyway, that that's not not such a big problem, um, and then uh, they're not really. I don't think they are chimpanzees, but again, that's not a problem. I mean, if you call them <laughs> elephants, that might be a problem because you're using completely the wrong vocabulary. But if you're you're not expected to have any kind of expertise in any any topic for the C two proficiency exam, so if you're not sure if they're gorillas, chimpanzees, or orangutans, whatever, that's not a problem. Uh, Anik did say that. Um, Maybe they're gorillas or some kind of apes. So that that's really good vocabulary. She's she's demonstrating a range of vocabulary for that type of animal. Um, and then she said maybe there are some birds and insects. And then Dirk said I, I don't think you'd hear insects. And I thought they were going to argue for a minute there, but they just continued. But um, and then Dirk said maybe you can hear the splashing of water, the rolling of plastic objects, and Anik said yeah, but I don't think you could hear any people because it doesn't look very nice there. So. Yeah, in one minute, you can't expect much more than that. I think they did very well in the time they had available to to give plenty of content to the examiners to mark and a range of vocabulary. The only criticism I would have is that they didn't use enough speculative vocabulary, but it's good interaction and yeah, lots of positives, so not bad at all. 
Okay, the next task is a, a longer task. It's a three minute task as the interlocutor is going to explain. The instructions are quite long, so it's very important to pay attention because you may forget one aspect of the task if you don't pay in, enough attention and you, you might get lost in, in, the, uh, in the pictures and forget exactly what you have to do. So that's, that's a big tip for this part of the exam. But let's see how Anik and Dirk do this task. With all the pictures, I'd like you to imagine that an environmental organisation is planning a poster campaign to raise public awareness of environmental issues. Talk together about the environmental issues suggested by these images. Then decide on an image for the poster which would be most effective in raising public awareness. OK, let's just go back a little bit because I wanted you to have an opportunity to look. So in this task, you have to look at all of the pictures. As I said, the, the task was quite long. It's a poster campaign to raise awareness, raise public awareness on environmental issues, basically. They, and then they have to choose one of the, the issues which is, is best to use in the poster campaign. So that's very important to keep in mind. And as you can see at the top left hand corner, you do have just a little bit of vocabulary to help you, so, some words just to help, they, they will remind you what the task is, poster campaign, the environment. So if you talk about all the pictures, but keep in mind what the task is. Um, so yeah, again, let's let's see how, how they do the task. Which would be most effective in raising public awareness. You have about three minutes to talk about this. I think the env environmental issue in, in the first photograph is, about the extinction of uh, animals, of animals Lots yes. Of species. Yes. Yeah, but you cannot really see that they're not doing well. It looks like a yeah. typical calendar picture or yeah, it doesn't definitely. look too bad. So I don't think this is a suitable picture. They're picture having a, mm. the good life in there. Yeah. It seems like. They look happy yeah. with the baby on the back. and. Yes. What do you think about B? I also don't think it's that suitable for the campaign because it also it I don't think it makes a big change for the awareness of the people if they see the picture because they probably won't connect it to pollution or deforestation yeah. or anything. The only thing here is like the plastic cup or I don't know maybe it's, it's a glass. Yeah, maybe it's the pollution so of, of water. It. Yeah, because this is obviously like I think yes frizzy water like filter water for yeah, a spring. So I also don't think this no, is suitable. I don't think I'd. Picture I think C. C, yeah, is, is a rather good one. You see the EC order. It's, in, it's a third world country, a def developing country, certainly. Yeah, and you can also see in between all the forest parts. So maybe there was a lot of forest deforestation going on before, so they could build houses. Yeah. So. This would be, I think, one of the better pictures for yes, the campaign definitely. because you can see that there has been some deforestation. Yes, I think these and probably are also then loss of species because the animals don't have their normal habitats yeah, anymore. Case, yeah, because all the trees. Yeah. Yeah, they cut down all the trees. I think these are a good one as well. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a common picture. Because normally beaches are supposed to be nice and families want to spend their time there or go for a stroll. And if it looks like this, I'm pretty much certain that yeah. no one wants to go there. So this would raise awareness. It looks like such a well, well known white beach with the light blue water, but it's all yeah, polluted. But to be by honest, by pretty much every beach looks kind of similar nowadays because everyone's just throwing away their yeah. Coca Cola cans, and yeah. so it's quite common. But it's very hard to, to, to make all litter bins on all beaches. Yeah. <coughs> what do you think about E? Well, it looks like uh, I don't. I don't really connect it with environment because they're just old used cars that are being compressed. Yeah, maybe they use too much old Yeah. Yeah, but also I wouldn't use it for the campaign. No, I think. So I think we choose D. D. Yeah, it's the best one definitely, and I think E is really bad because you you can use metal again. You can recycle it. Yeah. And D actually affects the people. Yes, So definitely. Thank you. OK, what do you think? What's your feedback on that? Um, I'm going to start with the positives. I think there were a lot of positives. Um, first of all, in my notes, 
um, I have, I, I've kept, I've taken notes on who speaks and uh, and what they've said. But I, I've got Dirk, Anik, Dirk, Anik, Dirk, Anik, many times. So that that shows that there was a lot of interaction. And that it may seem obvious, but I've, I've seen so many times when we've practiced this task in class with my students. Uh, sometimes because people get very nervous, it's quite a, a uncomfortable and and unnatural situation of course any exam task is uh, that sometimes people just dominate because they're not really aware of their partner and they, they just give a very long monologue like they speak for a minute and a half and then ask their partner what do you think and it's a lot for their partner to react to but this was a lot of interaction a lot of short contributions and that's that's very important it's a collaborative task it must be interaction um that that's one of the criterion that the examiners mark. So that's that's a positive. Um, another positive is the the vocabulary that they used. I think they both used some good vocabulary. Started by speaking about the instinct extinction of animals. Anik said the loss of species. Um, uh, we're connected to pollution or deforestation. Good word. It's a topic specific vocabulary. Maybe it's the pollution of water. Uh, filtered water from a spring, third world developing countries, deforestation again, um, go for a stroll, uh, well-known white beaches, white or wide beaches, I'm not sure what Dirk said there, light blue water, hard hard to make litter bins in all beaches. I, I think he meant hard to put li litter bins in all, all the beaches, but litter bins is, is good vocabulary. Um, recycle, so... So a lot of topic specific vocabulary, which is very important. And as I said, a lot of interaction. So so good. Um, and the third positive, I think that they, they completed the task. They managed to speak about all of the pictures and they chose which picture is best for the poster campaign in their opinion. There's no obligation to agree with this. You can end up disagreeing. But as long as you go through the, the process and you try to come to some kind of agreement, that's the important thing. So, so yeah, I thought that was a pretty good, pretty good um, task, pretty good example. Uh, some of the negatives, um, although I said there was some good interaction, I think it could have been better. Um, often it was sort of Dirk saying something and uh, Anik sort of saying something without... I didn't feel that Dirk really responded so much to what Anik was saying. And uh, I mean, very little eye contact or b the body language wasn't great from Dirk. I mean, the examiners don't specifically mark the body language, but I, does, I do think it demonstrates your um, confidence and, and it's part of communication. Um, and also I, what, another aspect I didn't like is when Dirk asked Anik, for example, what do you think about picture B? Or what do you, I think she later said, what do you think about picture D? That's fine. I mean, it's good to include your partner, that, but I think you should always give your opinion about a picture or give some something, get some idea or, or some opinion before asking your partner. So I think you should say, well, I think that picture B is, is good or bad or is interesting, whatever, um, because, et, et cetera. Um, and then say, what do you think? Do you agree? What's your take on this? Just so you're giving your partner something to react to, to respond to, not just sort of giving them the responsibility of, of starting talking about this. It wasn't really a problem today because Anik dealt with it very well, but in this in this example, but I think you have to be careful with that. You want to take it's not just for your partner, it's for you to get to to make sure you you give content. Because I think in general, although it was a good collaboration, I think Anik dominated a little bit i don't think dirk gave as much content as anik but but generally i thought it was pretty good um yeah a good good interactive collaborative task um some good vocabulary and they both spoke quite fluently i would have just seen like to have seen a bit more uh response to each other what they were saying so th that they were really not just giving their own um, opinions and ideas, but responding to each other's. But apart from that, very good. Okay, let's move on to part three now, which is, it's called the long term. In part, in the C2 proficiency, part two, part three, sorry, part three includes two tasks. 
uh, it's the long term and the discussion. So there is no part four in, in C2 proficiency, very different to C1 advanced. I say very different. It's not that different. It's just that the discussion is part of part three rather than a separate part. But the long term is very different. That doesn't uh, exist in the C1 advanced. OK, so so let's see how they do it again. I'll give you an opportunity to do to to do the task yourself. So I'll, I'll just pause it a little bit when when we see the card. But the interlocutor is going to explain the task now. Now, in this part of the test, you're each going to talk on your own for about two minutes. You need to listen while your partner is speaking because you'll be asked to comment afterwards. So, Dirk, I'm going to give you a card with a question written on it, and I'd like you to tell us what you think. There are also some ideas on the card for you to use if you like. All right? Here's your Thank card. You. Please, please let Anique see your card. Remember, Dirk, you have about two minutes to talk before we join in. Okay, so some important things to remember before you do this task, if you plan to do it yourself. As the interlocutor specified, you have to answer the question. You have two minutes to answer the question. And you have some ideas on the card to use if you like. So there's no obligation to use these ideas. In fact, a big tip that I give in my classes, a free tip here and in my C2 proficiency uh, online course, is that I recommend that you ignore the ideas on the card until or unless you need them. It's a much better way to approach this task. If you need them from the first moment, that's fine. If you feel that you need to use them because it's a difficult question to answer, that's fine. But it's better to sort of have them uh, in case you need them later and just get in the zone and develop the ideas yourself um, rather than use them immediately. And then sort of that can lead you in a direction that maybe you don't really want to go or you, you weren't planning on, on thinking about. And then if you run out of things to say, after 90 seconds, then you have to start thinking of new ideas, your own ideas at the end, and that's much more difficult. So yeah, an important tip, I recommend you ignore the ideas until or unless you need them. But let's see how Dirk approaches this. Remember, when he finishes, Anik will have a question, and then Dirk will have a question about Anik's question. So another big tip, it's very important that Dirk pays attention to what Anik says. OK. How important is it to make long-term plans? Um, I think in personal life, it's uh, quite important to make long-term plans because uh, you're able to, to uh, know what you want to become when you're uh, old and uh, what you want to uh, earn for money and what you uh, want to do for the, for the community, for your, for your country. Um, <clears throat> I think in, in, in talking in shorter terms, it's, it's uh, good to know what, what you want to uh, do this year. It's long term as well, but it's, it's, it's a short term. Um, in work, school, um, it's really uh, for yourself uh, important to know uh, what you want to do after school so you uh, have good grades in certain uh, subjects um, so so that uh, you will be able to uh, show other people after school that you um, uh, like the things uh, that you're good in. Um, in government um, it is of course uh, very uh, important to make long-term plans uh, if we look at uh, the whole euro crisis uh, now it's, they, they all um, didn't make uh, such good plans to uh, to see if the, the credibility of uh, the countries was was right before they uh, before they entered uh, uh, euro, the euro um, so it's really important to 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 look uh, to to uh, certain aspects in in, in uh, parts of uh, of the community uh, in government. Thank you. Why do some people prefer not to plan ahead? Well, some people want to be spontaneous, 
And I also think that's actually a quite good idea to sometimes just say, let's pack a suitcase with, let's say, a bikini and some trousers, and then let's go to the airport and just pick one flight wherever it takes us. So I think this is also quite good. But I think when it comes to important things like planning a family, it's very important that you plan ahead to have a good job so you're financially stable. So it depends. You cannot always be spontaneously. Spontaneous. What do you think? Um, I think it's, in, for most people, just laziness not to make long-term plans, I think. It's, they, they don't want to think about it, and that's the reason they, they don't think about it. Okay. okay. What's your feedback? Um, mine <laughs> is, uh, Dirk, not bad. And I think this is quite typical of this task, especially in younger people, because I, I think... Um, it's quite difficult to talk about something for a long time for anyone, but I think younger people struggle more for various reasons, which we're not going to go into now. But um, I think Dirk did OK. He spoke for two minutes on the topic. He answered the question. And that's that's important, of course. I think he uh, he was a bit incoherent at times. He got a bit lost. Um, and I think that's why I recommend you don't that's one of the reasons why I recommend you don't look at the ideas because I think he was forced to talk about something which to talk about topics where well, he wasn't forced it he chose to talk about topics that maybe he didn't really want to he chose to look uh, use the ideas on the card if he had just developed his own or just followed his own train of thought I think he would have found it easier but as I said it depends on the question it depends how you, on how you feel in the exam but I think it would have been better in that way so um, okay, yeah, uh, Dirk, Dirk said it's important in, in personal life. It's quite important. You're able to know what you want to become and what you want to earn and do for your community and country. Uh, talking in short terms this year is not long. It's quite long term, but short term a bit confusing. There spoke about school. It's really important to know uh, after school so that you'll be able to show. The things you're good in should be good at. Uh, then he spoke about the government, very important, long-term plans. Uh, the Euro crisis he used as an example. It's, it's perfectly okay to use specific examples. Just use them. Don't let it be your whole answer. I don't think one particular example should be your whole answer, but an aspect of one of your, your answers. Um, they didn't make good long-term plans or didn't make good long-term plans that's good structure to make plans um so yeah okay one thing that i noticed and we'll see with anik too um is the rep and this is another very useful tip i think a free tip i'm giving you here is um the use of the adjective important i see this so often in my classes with in these tasks people tend to import in, in repeat the word important a lot it's it's a, it's an adjective that seems to come up whatever the task is, and I hear so like with Dirk, I heard quite important, really important, very important. Later, Anik mentioned important, and then in her long term, you'll see she uses important again. Important is okay; it's a fine adjective, but you don't want to be repeating it so often. It's such a so easy just to to remind yourself to use synonyms, and important has so many synonyms crucial, essential, critical, vital, of paramount importance, everyone's favorite. So I mean, you, you don't need to use all of those, just use two or three of those. Uh, it, it's the same as the writing in, in your writing paper. If you can use uh, synonyms, it's easier in the writing paper because you have time to think about it. But um, if you if you if you're able to just notice when you're repeating any particular word, but important seems to be a very common then just use a synonym synonym and you're demonstrating a wider range of vocabulary to the to the examiners so yeah dirk okay not not a great performance to be honest not much advanced vocabulary not many advanced grammatical structures fluency not great either he was a lot of uh, uh, uh. so he 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 completed the task so he did okay. It's it's a it's a difficult task. I mean, it's very easy to observe from the outside, but if if you've ever tried to do it, you'll know that it's it's much more difficult when you're doing it, especially in an exam situation and being filmed. 
So I think both of these students are very brave and they, they did well, whatever, whatever. Uh, Anik, um, her response, her short response, uh, she was very fluent, very quick to answer. She didn't even need to think about it. Some people are good like that. They can just speak immediately. So she said, some people want to be spontaneous. Good pronunciation there. And and she mentioned about packing a suitcase just with a bikini and pick one flight wherever it takes us. Good structure. Then she said, when it comes to important things like planning a family, it's important that you plan ahead. So yeah, she repeated important in one sentence. Um, and then it depends on other things. Um, and she at the end, she corrected herself. She said, it's important. It's good to be spontaneously, I think. And then she said, oh, to be sponta spontaneous. So if you notice you make a mistake in the speaking paper, if you correct yourself immediately, um, that that mistake will not be noted by the assessor who is speak sitting behind the, the interlocutor. And then finally, Dirk's response. It's very important, as I said, that Dirk should pay attention to what Anik says, because this extra question will be, what do you think? Do you agree? What's your opinion? something like some kind of question like that um so it's good i think to to in your answer when you're responding to your partner to demonstrate that you have been listening to your partner uh, dirk didn't do that he just spoke he just said that it's laziness is um it's uh, laziness not to make long term plans which is fine it's, it's an okay answer it's fine good but i would for my i always tell my students just to respond just say yeah i i see what you mean or i take your point well, I agree, but I would add, or I disagree with what you've said, just to show or to demonstrate to the examiners that you have been paying attention and you are responding to your partner. Okay. Um, so let's let's move on to uh, Anik's long-term question now. Thank you. Uh, now, Anik, it's your turn to be given a question. Here's your card. Please let Dirk see your card. Remember, Anik, you have about two minutes to tell us what you think, and there are some ideas on the card for you to use if you like. All right? One thing I will say is um, you may have noticed that Dirk spent a few seconds. He took a few seconds before he started asking. You do. They will give you about 10 seconds um, before they start the watch, the stopwatch, if you need them. It, um, so that's that's up to you if you want to take those seconds or not. Yeah. What factors will influence how cities develop in the future? That's a very good question because I think because of the rising population nowadays, that's very important right now to think about the future. So um, when it comes to population, we can definitely see that there's going to be more people in one city. So probably they have to build more houses, higher houses, build more skyscrapers. People are going to live in much smaller spaces and also I think the living standard is going to get a bit down because you probably won't be able to have a garden and your own house will just share a small flat probably in the big cities. Also you have to deforest um, forests in order to make space for buildings. Um, so I think the cities are just going to get more packed with buildings and the nature or the sceneries are going to suffer from that and financially well they could develop in different ways i think everything is getting more expensive every day because the resources are getting rare rarer and yeah i think also the price of water is going to raise and energy and the fuel obviously and yeah just like things like petrol and climate, well, we're experiencing global climate changes, global warming. But I think not every city is affected so far. So probably in the jungles or like rainforests, the seasons are not really going to change because they're always at the equator. But other cities like, not really cities, but let's say the Antarctica, I think all the ice shelves are going to melt at some point and then just the animals are going to suffer and also the people there. Thank you. Is it important to preserve old buildings in cities? I think so, because uh, if you want to, to have uh, the old scenery that, that we had uh, in the early days, many, many people used to uh, 
are, are usually looking uh, looking back to, to the good life um, many old people and I think it's it's really good to to preserve those buildings uh, to, to have the, the old scenery in the cities what do you think I agree, but I also think that they're a very important part of the culture of the city. So let's look at England. I think it's, if I think of England, I always think automatically of red brick buildings and very charming small houses. So if we wouldn't have them in a few years anymore, I don't think England would have any charm left. So it's all about the flair and I think you really should preserve them. England wouldn't have any charm left. That's disgraceful to speak of England like that. Uh, no, I'm joking, of course. Um, okay, so the feedback on Anik, pretty good. Um, much more fluent, I think. So that's very, um, that's one of the aspects that the examiners look at, of course. Uh, and some good vocabulary. So she spoke about the rising po population. She said it's very important to think about the future. Um, to build, the, we'll need to build more houses, skyscrapers are good. As she said to deforest the forest, and she kind of smiled because she realized that was a redundancy. Uh, to, to deforest land would be better, but not a disaster. Um, the living standard is going to get a bit down. We don't say to get a bit down, to go down a bit, we would say. The living standard is or to decrease. Uh, cities are going to get more packed with buildings, she said. Then she spoke about the nature and the sceneries. Um, we don't we don't usually use a we don't use a um, def the definite article with nature, and it was, so we just talk about nature in general. That we don't need the. Um, financially, she spoke about everything is more expensive. The resources are getting rarer. She did well to to think about the co comparative. It's okay. We, rarer for resources. Yeah, maybe, but I think we'd say more more scarce um, or scarcer. In that case, both are possible. Uh, the price of water is going to raise. She said the price of the price of water is going to raise. Um, she means rise. Um, if something uh, something is raised um, uh, actively uh, to raise something, so the government will raise the price or the taxes, uh, but something rises um, more passively so the price of water is going to rise she spoke about fuel petrol uh, she spoke about climate changes climate changes climate change we just the expression is climate change in general not climate changes global warming she said the ice shelves are going to melt uh, and animals are going to suffer so a lot of good vocabulary and she spoke very fluently and a few mistakes but n not too many so not pretty good and then Dirk's extra question, um, speaking about um, uh, the old conserving old buildings, he said, I think it's important. Well, I said, I think so. The old scenery is important uh, as people are looking. He corrected himself. He, he almost said people used to, but he he changed it to people are usually looking back at look back to the good life. So the old people, he said. And what I liked about Anik's response is that, as I said earlier, that she demonstrated that she was listening and paying attention to Dirk. She said, I agree. I agree, but I also think... So it, as the danger of agreeing is that you don't have m anything more to say. If you just agree with your partner, say, yeah, I agree. Everything you just said, I agree with. Then what more can you say? But Anik did add. She said, I agree, but I also think... So that's it's okay to agree as long as you add something. You have to say something more. It's, it's often easier to disagree, but in this case, Anik agreed. I agree, but I also think they are an important, that word again, part of culture. She spoke about red brick building, red brick buildings and charming houses. So again, a lot of good vocabulary in, in little time. So pretty good. Um, a pretty good contribution from Anik. Um, some good vocabulary. As I said, again, we saw the word important three or four times. It's just so easy to to think of some some synonyms for for important, um, but yeah, very good. So let's go on to the last part now. It's it's still part three, but it's the second part, part three, which is the the, the discussion where the two candidates just talk together, hopefully in a nice conversation uh, about the questions that the interlocutor will ask. 
Um, there's no strict time limit here. It's just until the end of the exam. So that depends how long the rest of the, the exam has taken. Okay, so let's go. Thank you. Now, to finish the test, we're going to talk about the future in general. Do you think newspapers and books have a future? Yes, I think so. Some people say that the internet is going to take over everything and that you're going to read all the articles now on the iPads, on e-booklets, what yeah. are they called? Kindle. Kindle, exactly. Yeah. But I think it's still nice to have an actual newspaper in your hand, a physical one that you can touch and just also the smell of the paper. So. Yeah. And I think the sound of flipping a, a, pa yeah. a page is so good. And uh, most people don't like it to, to, to read from, from a screen. Uh, because uh, their eyes get tired, but I and think it's, it's, it's much better to, to read from a paper. It's, it's more quiet, more just relaxing for your eyes. Yeah. I'm just going to stop it there because I, I think that's that's a pretty good answer. I think they, they answered, both of them gave some good vocabulary and there was some interaction there. Again, I think Anik was more um, forthcoming or more uh, willing to to interact with Dirk. Dirk is looking at the interlocutor most of the time, and this is an interactive task. So I would have seen, a, would have liked to have seen a bit of body language from Dirk. You know, open to um, to respond and to to interact with with Anik, but not too bad. I mean, uh, Anik started. Some people um, say that the the internet is going to take over. They mentioned eBooks. Dirk helped Anik out by saying Kindle. Um, and then Dirk sp spoke about the sound of flipping of pages. It's nice and more relaxing to read. Um, so yeah, uh, fine. But again, I would have liked to have seen a bit more interaction. Yeah. Given the choice, would you rather live in the past or in the future? Um, I think I would rather live in the past because because it's 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 uh, much better life I think uh, less worried and and there will be there are so many issues they're they're complaining about and and old people uh, all, everybody is, is just thinking about problems that are not re real problems in my view um, and I think in the early days they they didn't have the time to worry about those problems so I think I would rather live in the past yeah I also think it's very tempting to live let's say in the Roman times, because they had like a lot of feasts and yeah, yeah it's just also the food, enjoying the food, going to not parties, but all the celebrations there. I really think that it's going to be not easier to live there because you don't have all the technology, of course. But as he pointed out, I think that nowadays we worry about too many small things. And back then it was just war or not war and starve or not starve and the um, diseases they had back then. Okay, they of course now we have the medical advantages, yes. so we don't have to worry about the pest or I don't know. Yeah, but we're worrying about things that are not But it also would problems. be nice to like, be one day in the future, where you have like everything automatically and yeah, just not to actually live there, but just to experience and but see how, how will it is. you enjoy yourself if everybody, everything is done by, by something else? Well, we don't know how the future is going to be like, no. so no. Maybe, no. maybe you have like cyber jet and you can fly and I think this would be yeah. fun. Could be. Could be. Okay. Again, this is an interactive task. So uh, Dirk's first answer was fine. He, his first response to the question, but he, he didn't include Anik at any time. He just looked at the interlocutor and when he finished, he said, yeah, that's what I think. And he was quite happy with his answer, I think. But he completely forgot about Anik. So Anik said, okay, I'll speak now. And Anik was constantly looking at um, Dirk um, sh demonstrating that she knew it was an interactive task. Again, I think what happens, and I, I'm sure this happened to Dirk, you know, you get very nervous in these tests and you're, you're very aware that you want to de demonstrate your high level to the interlocutor. And you're, it's, it's very normal that you kind of just want to impress and, and you think about yourself. But you need to think about your partner because that will affect your mark. You have to include your partner. So, yeah, I think Dirk, if he had just turned to Anik and said, do you agree? That's all he had to do. And that would have been an interactive task. 
later, um, I think I imagine that the interlocutor was doing this or, or saying, you know, doing some kind of body language to, to make to encourage them to interact because that you could see at one point they both said, OK, and then they started looking at each other and they kind of relaxed a little bit, too, that they had started laughing and, and almost joking between each other, which was, I think, nice. And I think it was demonstrated a better, a better demonstrated their real level of English. I think if this is the uh, the opportunity of this part of the exam, that if you can just relax a little bit, often this is where you can finally show your true command of English and 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 just how you can maintain a nice conversation, hopefully using a good range of grammatical structures and vocabulary, but if not, at least having a nice interaction and speaking fluently. So it got better towards the end, but as I said, Dirk was just answering the question and not really including Anik at first. Um, so yeah, the, the, the content was fine. They spoke about living in the past, less worried, less worries, I think he meant. Everybody is thinking about problems. I was a bit confused at some point whether he was talking about in the present or the past, but um, yeah, he was speaking about the present, about old people worry about problems that are not real. Uh, didn't ha In the past, people didn't have time to worry. Anik spoke about Roman times. It's not necessarily easier, but because they didn't have technology. And then she said, as he pointed out, so as Dirk pointed out, so she demonstrated that she had been paying attention and listening, and she was responding to what um, what Dirk said. I, I would have preferred it if she had said, as as you pointed out, rather than directing her or addressing the interlocutor. She could have addressed Dirk, said, as you pointed out. Um, but at least she was responding to what Dirk said. So let's see if it gets any better, the inter interaction in the last couple of questions. Some people worry that wild animals will only exist in zoos in the future. What do you think about this? Well, I hope not. No. But right now it seems like many species are going to be extinct in hundreds of years. But I think humankind should try to do their best in preserving them and maybe keeping them in zoo as well is helping to preserve them because they don't lose their habitat there, but still it's not real wildlife. Yeah, but I think it's it's better to have certain reservates to, to, to keep the animals and to have the wildlife as well yeah. in there. It's much, much better for the for the animals, I think, than, than in a zoo. I think the, all the animals are, are so, uh, are so bored by, by, by always the same thing in the Yeah, in, in a zoo. small cage. Yes. What changes might there be in food and food production in the future? Well, I'm still waiting for the invention of like a small pill where you can have like a starter, a main course and a dessert that would change <laughs> flavors. It would be very nice, no? It, then you don't have to take all the time and eating it and you have the same enjoyment, but still it also wouldn't be the same. Like actually cutting a nice piece of steak, <laughs> it's better than just taking a tablet. But I think we will always uh, eat vegetables, but I think there will be a change in, in maybe the food uh, coming from snack bars and, and, and uh, fast food uh, brands. But I also think that um, more food is going to be organic in yes, the future. Yes, definitely. Thank you. That is the end of the test. Okay, so that is the end of the test. Um, so that last part, those last two questions, I'm going to stop sharing now. Uh, those last two questions, again, not really enough interaction for my for my liking, uh, especially from Dirk's side. He kind of when he finished answering his question, he seemed quite happy just to, to end the conversation there. But it, it, it's so easy. I know it's difficult when you're nervous, but it's so easy just to say, do you agree with me? What, or what's your take on this? How do you feel? What's your opinion? That's interacting. That's a conversation. That's a discussion. Um, whereas Dirk especially was just really answering the question for himself, not really thinking of his partner. Anik, again, with the body language, she was constantly looking at Dirk. So that showed that she understood the task better, I think. Um, regarding the content, yeah, fine. Species are going to be extinct. Maybe keeping a zoo is better. Help. Uh, it's helping preserve them. Uh, Dirk said it's better to have certain reservates. He meant reserves, I think, like um, nature reserves. Uh, animals are so bored, of course, yeah. 
Um, and then the last question, this Annie gave, wanted this uh, this pill, an invention of a pill with a starters, uh, main course and dessert all in one. So fine. Again, the, the answers were fine. Uh, I just would have liked to have seen more of a development of the discussion rather than just short answers. Um, but it's very important to to keep your contribution short in this. They also answered four questions. I think I always say to my students, one, two or three questions, probably two or three are best. If, if you can have a really good conversation about just the first question where you're not repeating yourself or each other and you're giving good content and new vocabulary, just on one question, that's fine. It's very difficult to do that. So it's better to, um, wait, you know, when you feel that you've answered the question, wait for another question from the examiner. So at least two questions, three would be fine. I think anything more than three, I think, sort of demonstrates you're not really developing the the discussion enough, I think. So yeah, in in conclusion for the whole exam, pretty good. I think they both did quite well. It's a very difficult um, exam. It's a very difficult situation, very unnatural, very um, stressful, and you will be ner very nerve wracking. Um, but they both did well. I think Anik demonstrated a, a higher level of English in general. She spoke much more fluently. She used a wider range of vocabulary and grammatical structures. She tried to interact more with with Dirk. Um, so I think she would have definitely got a higher mark. I think Anik definitely passed or would have passed if it were the real, real exam, which I don't think it was, by the way. I, I don't imagine they're real examiners and real candidates, but I don't think it was the real exam. Um, I don't know. I may be wrong about that. So yeah, I think she, Anik did, did pretty well. She got a good score, I would imagine. Uh, Dirk, not so good for a C2 proficiency level. I, I'm guessing he's at the, the start of his preparation for the exam. So he had still had some weeks or months to, before he took the exam, I hope. I, again, like the other video, if anybody knows Dirk or Anik, or if Dirk or Anik are watching this video, get in contact with me. I would love to interview you for a video. Uh, but yeah, Dirk, I'm not sure if he passed, to be honest. I think if he passed, it was really on the limit. Really, I don't know if, if any of you who watched the C1 Advanced video from my from last week, it's a very similar situation. We had um, Raphael and Maud. And in fact, I've seen the examiner comments, the examiner marks. They are exactly the same. Raphael and Dirk got exactly the same scores. For all the criteria, all the marking criteria, they've got three out of five. Three for grammatical resource, uh, lexical resource, etc. So the, the global score was three out of five. And Anik, the same as Maud, she got three for grammatical resource and four for all the others, for all the other criteria. So a global score of four, which is a pass, of course. I think she would have she would have passed. Uh, I'm, as I said, I, I, she would have passed. Dirk, three out of five, it depends. We'd need to go into more detail um, to find out exactly the, whether he passed or not. I don't think he did. Uh, maybe he did in, in real life because if he took the exam in a few weeks with a bit more preparation because he just needed to improve on a, a couple of areas and he, he would have got there. So yeah, as always, you can learn from their mistakes, what they didn't do so well. And you can also learn from what, you know, the, what they did really well, which... Um, there was there was a lot in this exam. A lot of I think the, their strengths were the um, that they completed the tasks, especially Anique with the interaction. That's very important in in the collaborative tasks, of course. So let me know in the comments your feedback on this. I'd love to know what you what you felt about it. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget about my C two proficiency preparation course. It's available. Check the link in the description, and I'll see you very soon for another video.